brothers and sisters, and welcome to another lesson from Brothers Working in the Vineyards. And as best as we can, we will continue to come to you live Thursdays at 1 p.m. via Facebook, and thereafter you can check us out on YouTube. And all of our teachers and all of our readers will be from the Israel of God, where Brother Henry Bowie is the head pastor. And also, all of our scriptures will come from the King James Version of the Bible. And sisters and brothers, before we begin each and every lesson, we will open with prayer. But before we get to today's prayer, I'd like to give you the title of today's lesson. And the title of today's lesson is The End Gathering. Again, the title of today's lesson is The End Gathering. And now that you have the title of today's lesson, we're going to go into our scripture reading. And our scripture reading is going to come from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that when the Lord, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Again, our scripture reading came from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 1 through 3. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so as your host at this time, I turn it over to our teacher and our reader. And today's teacher is Brother Ray Ben, And today's reader is Brother James. Praise the Lord, Brother Ed, for another fantastic introduction. And uh, we want to say to the listening audience, our brothers and sisters, that uh, we want to thank the God of Israel for giving us another opportunity to work in the vineyard. And you know what? Uh, you know, we hear a lot of things that's spoken in the name of the Lord and how we going to heaven and everything like that. But when you look at the scripture, you get a whole different picture. Lord's got a plan and we got to tap into it. <clears throat> he have planted a field and he going to gather the fruit of it. And the gathering of the fruit is going to be in the Feast of Tabernacle. The Lord said, uh, you know, Preach the word in season and out of season. We out of season for the tabernacle, but we want to show you that when the Lord returns, it's going to be on the Feast of Tabernacles, and it's going to be the end gathering. That's why we named this the end gathering. And the Lord is getting his fruit, and he gathered into his bond, which represents the kingdom, and the tares, he's going to bind them in bottles and burn them in the fire. So this is why it's so important for us to be and understand the plan of the Lord. So we're going to tap in and get and some understanding out of the book, people, because my word don't mean nothing. It's the word of God that means everything. So without further ado, we're going to start this in Exodus, the 23rd chapter. And we're going to see what the book say about this in God. Because the Lord commanded Israel that he wanted them to come up three times a year, because see, it's seven Sabbaths, but it's three times a year the Lord wants you to come up to the Lord. He wants you to keep all seven, which the Sabbath is included. But let's see what he said here in Exodus 23 and verse 14. And when you get it, brother, smoke, go ahead and read. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Uh huh. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Uh huh. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee, uh -huh. in the time appointed of the month a beer. Go ahead. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, uh -huh. and none shall appear before me empty. So these three times you come for the Lord, Lord said, don't come before him empty. Have something to put into the pot of the Lord. But go ahead and read. 
and of the and the feast of harvest, uh -huh. the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field. Uh -huh. See, this thing is about sowing, it's about fields, it's about planting, and it's about the first fruits. But well, let's see what this in gathering is about. Go ahead and read. And the feast of in gathering. And this is what we're dealing with today: the feast of in gathering, which is in the end of the year. Go ahead and read. Which is in the end of the year. Uh huh. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. And this is what the Lord is doing. This whole thing, all the way back from Adam, the Lord have got this vineyard. He planted his seed, and at the end of it, he gonna gather the fruit into his barn. And we pray that we be among. So now let's go up and see how this book break. How does that hook up with modern time? Well, let's see what the book say. Let's go to Matthew 13 chapter now. But this is that end gathering. The Lord said it happened at the end of the year. And it's dealing with the Feast of Tabernacles. But uh, we didn't go to Leviticus 23 chapter. All the Lord's feast days is right there. But we're just trying to look at this end gathering. So Matthew 13. And we're going to pick it up <clears> at verse... 24, Matthew 13 and 24. Let's see what the book say. Okay, go ahead and smoke if you got it. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, uh -huh. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now, right, this is what it's all about. The Lord and sowed good seed in his field. Go ahead and read. But while men slept, his enemy came uh -huh. and sowed tares among the wheat uh -huh. and went his way. Go ahead and read. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit. Uh huh. Then appeared the tares also. So now he had planted good seed in there. But the enemy came and planted tares. And when he seen it, he said, Oh man, the tares appeared also. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. We got to watch out, people, because either we're going to be a tare or we're going to be some wheat. But go ahead and read it. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Uh huh. Sir. Didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Go ahead. For once then came, then has it tear. Uh huh. He said unto them, An enemy has done this. Go ahead. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Uh huh. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye would up also the wheat with them. That's right. Cause see, people, tares, wheat and the tares, when they're young, they both look the same. And just like if they would have plucked up the tares, they would have got some of the wheat too. Because some of us was tares, but the Lord is turning us into wheat. And he is, so you can't get them when they're young. He said, let them both go together and he'll separate them when he comes. But what verse you start? That was verse 30? No, that was verse 29. Okay, continue to read. Let both grow together into the harvest. Oh, they're going to grow together until when? The harvest. And the harvest is what? The end gathering. Yeah. This is when you get the fruit. Go ahead and read. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, uh -huh. gather you together first the tares. And what you going to do with them? And bind them in bundles to burn yeah. them. Oh, my God. Go ahead and read. But gather the wheat into my barn. And the barn represents what? The kingdom of God. That's right. But this is the thing. Got This Lord got this thing on this plant and the vineyard and the harvest to gather the fruit in. Bind the tares in a bundle and cast them in that fire, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now we're going to let the book uh, interpret the book. Skip down to verse 37 and continue. What does it say? He answered and said unto them, Uh huh. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Oh, so the son of man, which is Jesus, he sowed the good seed, huh? Go ahead and read. The field is the world. The field is the world. This is the this is Lord's God in the whole world. The field is the world. Go ahead and read. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Oh, go ahead. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. This is why we don't want to be no tares. Mm -hmm. Because the wicked one is Satan the devil. If you are a tare, he is your father. Mm -hmm. This is what we got to understand. But read 39. The enemy that sold them is the devil. What? The devil. Go ahead and read. The harvest is the end of the world. Oh, this is what we're dealing with, people. This is going to happen when in the tabernacle at the end of the world. What's going to happen? And the reapers are the angels. Mm. Oh, boy, and if you ain't straight, them angels going to grab you and burn you like them bundles and cast you into that fire, people. Mm -hmm. But we doing this to warn you, people, because they ain't teaching the word of God no, they not. in these churches, people. No, they not. 
We got to know what the plan of the Lord is, or we're going to fool around and end up being tares and binding and bundled. But yeah. well, go ahead and read. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, uh -huh. so shall it be in the end of this world. Oh, that's how it's going to be in the end? Yes, and right. this is what we got to watch, people. This thing is to fill the whole world. And the thing is, we got to be weak. We don't want to be tared. But right now, the book said, let them grow together. Because at the end of the harvest, you're going to be able to tell the wheat from the tails plainly. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to see who's serving God and who not. That's right, God. brother. And this is why we got to tap into this thing before it's too late. But what verse did you stop at? That was the end of 40. That was the end of 40. Continue reading. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, uh -huh. and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, uh -huh. and them which do and them which do iniquity. And the things that offend, these are those that are breaking the commandments of God. Yes. And they are offending God, and he's going to cast them out of their kingdom. This is what he said. Go ahead and read. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Uh-huh. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And you know it's so bad, people, it's going to be forever. Oh, my God. Can you imagine suffering, <clears throat> burning in fire? The flesh worms is eating on you. But you're not consumed, and you wail and howling mm, mm, mm. forever, people. That's a scary thing. That's why we gotta make sure we got this thing right. You know, a lot of things we make mistakes and we mess up and we blow this thing. But this is something that we can't blow. We gotta get this right because we want to be in God's kingdom. That's four three. Can you read that for me? Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Uh huh. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. And this is the bond, people, that we're trying to get in. Yes, this is the one. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. But these things the Lord have left for us in his word, people, so that we will know what to do. That is the love of God. He sent his word. He told us everything. We don't have to guess. We don't have to speculate. All we have to do is read. And I'm going to tell you, Everything that we teach here on the brothers in the vineyard, we learned them up at the Israel of God. That's right, brother. So you make sure you take some time out and get down to that Israel of God because it is a college, it's a hospital, it heals, and it will teach you Praise what does say the Lord. That's right, brother. But now, 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. And when you get it, Brother Smoke, go ahead and read. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Uh -huh. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Oh, so the last enemy going to be destroyed is death. But how did death come on the scene? It was by sin. Mm -hmm. And if it ain't no more sin, it ain't no more death. But go ahead and read now. For he has put all things under his feet. Uh -huh. But when he saith all things are put under him, uh -huh. it is manifest that he is accepted. Right, but you know what? I want to bag that up to verse 20. And I see my eyes are getting a little dim. And we want to reroute this one more time. 20. Verse, what did it say? But now is Christ risen from the dead. There you go. And become the first fruits of them that slept. Oh, Christ was the first fruits of them that slept? Yes, right. Hey, he was in the grave for how long, people? Three days and three nights. And then he rose. And he was the first fruits from the dead. He was the first one that came up. He said, well, a lot of people been raised. Yeah, but Jesus was one that was raised but didn't go back to the grave. That's right. That's right. So he's the first fruits. And... Of them that slept. And when he's talking about sleep, this is the first death. It's a sleep. But the second death is Ooh, eternal. That's right. But look what he's saying now. 21. Yes. For since by man came death, uh -huh. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Yes, sir. For as in Adam all die, uh -huh. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go ahead. But every man in his own order. Uh -huh. Christ the first fruits. Uh -huh. After what they that are Christ that is coming. See, we're talking about the fruits. We're talking about the end gathering. And this lets me know, people, you don't get no fruit out of the sky. You get the fruit out of the ground. That's right. Brother. That's where I know what all the saints is. Right. They're in the ground. That's and they're right. waiting to be gathered in the first fruit. Christ the first fruit, then afterward, they that are Christ. At when? At it is coming. coming. And this is the way it is, people. But then, uh, let's see. We go, go a little further. Go ahead. 
Then come at the end, uh -huh. when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, uh -huh. even the Father. Glory. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. This is what Jesus is coming to do. Jesus' kingdom is going to be here a thousand years before the Father kingdom comes. And what is he going to do? He's going to put down all rule and all authority and all power. And he's going to show you. He's going to reign. He's going to get this earth in order and clean it up because the Father's kingdom is on the way. And that's why he said, but now, hold your spot there and let's go. Skip down to that verse 36. What did it say? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. Yes, sir. So that body's got to die. In order for it to be quickened, because the Lord is going to bring it back to life. That's what quicken means, to be brought back to life. And this is what the Lord is going to do. But read a little bit more. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, uh -huh. but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Uh -huh. But God give it to the body as it has pleased him. Go ahead. And to every seed his own body. And this is what the Lord says about body. It's about coming from the ground. It's about that fruit. It's about the end gathering. Because how are you going to live forever in a body that's dying? And it's a corruptible body. Mm. Hey, when you get 60 or 70 years old, you're almost out of here. That ain't forever. That's just a small moment. The Lord said man's life is like a shadow. Have you ever seen a shadow? You see it for a minute and then it's gone. That's the way man's life is, people. Woo. But now, we got to have a body change. But before you get that body change, you got to deal with that mind. That's right. He got to make sure that mind is straight. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to James, the first chapter. Because we're dealing with them first fruits. That fruit from the ground that the Lord is going to gather from the barn. The first chapter. Uh, James, the first chapter, sir. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17. But let me get there with you. And uh, seven, uh, James 1 and 17. What did it say, bro? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Yes, it is. And coming down from the Father of light, uh -huh. with whom is no variableness. Neither shadow of turning. So because this we can simply say the Lord is God and he changed not. No verbalness, no change. The plan is set in order and the Lord ain't going to alter. It's going to go and go all the way to the kingdom. It started with Adam and he laid this thing out all the way to the kingdom of the Father. You don't have to guess. Everything is written in the book. But go ahead and read now. Of his own will begat he us. With the word of truth. Oh, so that's what he would get you with, that word of truth. That's why the Son of Man, he is the one that sowed that good seed. What is it? The word of God. And it's got to be planted in your mind, people. But go ahead and read. That we should be of a kind of first fruits of his creature. Are we going to be what? The kind of first fruits of his creature. Because Jesus is the first fruit, but afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. And the Lord has raised them up. From the ground, people, because that's where they is. They ain't floating around. You can't get the fruit. You never go and get a, a watermelon in the sky. Because <laughs> the fruit is on the ground, people. The Lord is showing you something. When you understand these things, you know ain't nobody in heaven. Because we got to deal with the end gathering. We got to deal with the first fruit, the book say. But now, what did you stop at, bro? I stopped at verse 18. You stopped at verse 18? Well, let's go further. Let's go to... Uh, Jeremiah the second chapter. We're just gonna read one verse. Let's show you how the Lord did with the first fruits. Even when you get your money, people, the Lord said, "Honor the Lord with the first fruits of your increase, and your bonds will be filled with plenty, and your presses will bust out with new wine." Mm. Ain't that something? It's right, bro. That's a secret for the servant of God. You pay them tithes and honor the Lord first before you spend a dime. You take the Lord's money off the top, and you. Put that in the offering, and the Lord said, your, bond, your bonds will be filled with plenty, and your presence will bust out with new wine. Right. But Jeremiah uh, 2, and we're just going to read verse 3. 2 and 3. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Yes, sir. And the first fruits of his increase. Oh, that's what Israel was. He was holiness to the Lord. 
was he was the first fruit. He was the first nation that the Lord had got. See, when we understand this, then let you know the Lord is going to get the rest of the nation. That's right. But Israel was the first fruit because that's what the Lord wants. He wants the first fruits. He wants your best. Even down in with Cain and Abel, they made an offer to the Lord. Hey, Cain just picked up something off the ground and offered to the Lord. But what did Abel? Abel gave his best. He gave the first fruits. And that's what the Lord has required from us people. He want our best. He want us to be weak and not tears. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. We're just taking a piece at a time. And we're just looking at this harvest, which is dealing with the tabernacle. See, all the feast days are a shadow of things to come. And what is the tabernacle for to do? The year in gathering. This is when the Lord is going to gather all his fruit into his barn. And this is what we want to be a part of. But back to 1 Corinthians 15. And this time we're going to start at verse 25. 1 Corinthians 15 and 25. Okay, go ahead. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Uh -huh. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And if you can't die, then you know you got to have another body. That's right. Because this one here, the day that you was born, when you came, that first step you took out of your mother's womb, guess where you was walking to? Straight down to the grave. And as time go on, you get older and older and older until the day come when you take your last step. But some of us ain't got to die. Some of us going to be living when the Lord comes. That's what the scriptures But say. the thing is, hey, those that are living are not going to prevent them which are asleep, the book say. But now, read that 26 again. The last enemy that should be destroyed is death. Uh-huh. For his Go ahead. For he has put all things under his feet. Uh -huh. But when he saith all things are put under him, Go ahead. it is manifest that he is accepted, uh -huh. which did put all things under him. And who is accepting Jesus the Father? But now, skip down to verse 51. And what did it say? Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh-huh. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, I told you all of us ain't got to die, but we got to all be changed. You got to be changed from what? This flesh and blood body to that spiritual body. And you know when that happens, you know what you can say? I'm born again. That's right. But until that comes, you ain't born again. You've been born one time in the flesh. But go ahead and read. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. When? At the last trump. Go ahead. For the trumpet shall sound. Uh-huh. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. See, this is the Lord gathering his fruit. He gathering all his saints. All back that served God all the way back to Adam. Now it's time for you to get up. We come on into the kingdom. Come and get the Lord is gathering the fruit of the Lord. Ain't this something? Go ahead and read now. And we shall be changed. Yes, sir. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. So what kind of body we got now? Corruptible. Hey, when you come out of that baby, you are start corrupting. Hey, are you good when you're 20 and 21? You, ooh, my body ain't corrupted. I can do it. You think me, but boy, when you look around, and you look in the mirror, you say, boy, where did this old man come, come from? That's right. You can't shoot no more basketball. You, you put that basketball in the garage. I, I can't play it no more. But why? Because my body's corrupted, people. Your body's corrupted. I don't care. They got you on TV. And, oh, you put this on your face. It'll make you look like you're 17. You look like you're 17, but you, you're 75. And you're going down. But let's go. What verse are we at? We sit in the middle of 53. Go ahead and read. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Uh-huh. And this mortal must put on immortality. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. Uh-huh. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. What is it? Death is swallowed up in victory. Because you can't die no more, people. Because you done made the change. This corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. That's how we're going to live forever in God's kingdom. We can't do it in the flesh and blood body. Lord said, unless you be born again, you can't even see the kingdom. Because flesh can't live forever, people. But now, let's go a little further. He said, it's going to be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Let's go look at it. Let's go to Isaiah 25. Because the book is quoting the book, people. 
And if you deal with the book like the Lord says, you go here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. And once you line it up, and then you get all the precepts and put it together, you got a clear picture on what the Lord is telling you. You don't have to guess and you don't have to speculate. But let's see where it was written that, that death is swallowed up in victory and what time is this going to be. Isaiah 25 and verse 4. Isaiah 25 and verse 4. Okay, go ahead. For thou hast been a strength to the poor. Yes, sir. Don't ever forget that. Go ahead. A strength to the needy in his distress. That's right. Because some trumpets time comes on. His thing is getting tight. They're raising all kind of money. But remember, the Lord is right there. He says he's standing at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that will condemn his soul. He is strength to the needy. And when you in distress, but go ahead and read. A refuge from the storm. Yes, sir. A shadow from the heat. Uh-huh. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes when they come in and do all these things and try to put all these restrictions on you, it's like a storm coming in, knocking you up against the wall, man. It's going to destroy you if the Lord don't deliver you. But go ahead and read. Thou shall bring down the noise of strangers. Yes, sir. As the heat in the dry place. Uh-huh. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. Go ahead. The branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. Hey, that's them tears. They're going to be brought low. They're going to be bound in the bundle. They're going to be cast in the fire. But go ahead and read. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts uh -huh. make it to all people go ahead. a feast of fat things. Oh, what feast is this, people? This is the feast of tabernacles. Go ahead and read. A feast of wines of the leaves. Yes, sir. Of fat things full of marrow. Uh -huh. Of wines of the leaves well we find. Yes, sir. But I thought that wine was no good. But the Lord got it right there. <laughs> I said, another scripture tell you, you want to drink it in the course of my holiness. And they say that's it. Mm -mm. But go ahead and read. And he will destroy in this mountain uh -huh. the face of the covering cast over all people. And what's that covering that's cast over all people? This is the lies and deception, people. The Lord will wipe it away so you can see clearly. Go ahead and read. And the veil that is spread over all nations. Uh huh. He will swallow up death and victory. Oh, he's going to swallow up death and victory. This is what Paul was quoting in 1 Corinthians, people. This is where it's written. He going to swallow up death in victory. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. Yes, sir. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. Yes, sir. We For the we Lord has spoken it. Who would say that? Read that one more time. For the Lord has spoken it. And when you hear that, people take it to the bank, put your last money on it, and you'll win every time. Why? Because the Lord has spoken it. But now, Keep reading a little bit more, because this is what we're going to be able to say. And it shall be said in that day, uh -huh. no, this is our God. This is our God. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is the one that wasn't born on 25th day of December, people. <laughs> That's right. This is the line of the tribe of Judah. This is the one we've been waiting for. Go ahead and read. We have waited for him. Uh-huh. And he will save us. Yes, sir. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Uh huh. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And this is what we're dealing with. But where is it going to be? Keep reading. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest. And the Lord caused Jeremiah to show you where that rest was. It's in Jerusalem, people. That's where the Lord is going to rest. That's where the kingdom is going to be. And that's where his service is going to be. That's where the wheat is going to be. And the tears is going to be there too. But they're going to be in a fire burning forever. But we got to make the right choice. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Revelation 11 now. Because see, the first resurrection is the Lord gathering the end. He gathering the saints. He, every last one of them. And see, the big secret people is everybody that's born is going to live forever. That's right. But what side of the fence you going to live that's on? Right. You going to decide it by your own works, people. I'm going to decide it by my works. So we got to be our own deliverer. That's why he said, let each soul work out his salvation with fear and trembling. But now, Revelation 11 and verse 15. Go ahead. And the seventh angel sounded. Uh-huh. And there were great voices in heaven saying, Go ahead. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord uh -huh. and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. That's right. Because when he comes, he's going to tell out all authority and all power. We read it. And he's going to reign on this earth. Go ahead and read. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats uh -huh. fell upon their faces. And what did they say? And worshiped God, uh -huh. saying, 
We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, uh -huh. which art and was and art to come. This is Jesus. Go ahead. Because thou hast taken in thee thy great power uh -huh. and his reign. And his reign has ruled, people. Because when he come, he put down all power and all authority. But go ahead and read 18th verse now. And the nations were angry, uh -huh. and thy wrath has come. Go ahead. In the time of the dead, that they should be judged. And they said, you got to judge the dead, just judge right on when he died. No. Mm -hmm. All these cats, I'll go to every fruit. Oh, he was a good dude. He going to heaven. And everybody going to heaven. And it's up Abraham <laughs> never ain't, ain't going there, but you gonna go down these days. <laughs> Something's wrong with that, people. But it's going to be a time when the day going to be judged. Go ahead and read. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, yes, the prophets, sir. and to the saints. That's what you're going to go ahead. And them that fear thy name, uh -huh. small and great, and should have destroyed them which destroy the earth. Yes, sir. And they destroyed mm -hmm. that earth with false doctrine. But now the Lord is going to come and straighten it out. But he said it's going to be the time of the day when they're going to be judged. But the Lord did it that way because you don't get two or three pieces of fruit and take them in your crib. You get the whole crop. And this is what the Lord is letting us know. This is why he made this statement. Let's go to Hebrews 11 chapter. Hebrews 11, we're going to pick up at verse 36. Hebrews 11 and 36. Now we can understand this here. And this is talking about, see, this Hebrews 11 is a chapter of faith. This is where you can uh, measure yourself and see what kind of servant you are. Because these all are the servants of God, and all of them died with a good report, but they didn't receive the reward because mm. the Lord said, I come and my reward is with me. But now Hebrews 11 and 36, what does he say? And others had trial of cruel mocking. That's right, because they went through some changes. They went and whooped and was killed. These were the servants of God, suffer people. So if you serve God, you ain't going through nothing. Maybe you ain't serving God. But the Lord said, every son he received, he chastised. Whom he chastised, not as a bastard and not a son. But go ahead and read. And scourgings, yeah. Moreover, bonds and imprisonments. So they were locked up, scourged and whooping. And all these are the saints now we're looking at. Go ahead and read. They were stoned. Uh, they were sown asunder. I mean, cut in half, people. Go ahead and read. Were tempted. Yes. Were slain with the sword. Uh-huh. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. Yes, sir. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented. You mean these are the servants of God? The I'm looking servants at servants of God. Go ahead and read. Of whom the world was not worthy. See, what were of these people, man? These people were God's servants. They was trying to teach and help you get to the kingdom. And we killed them and saw them and sunder. Stole them all oh, this here. Right. Go ahead and read. They wanted in desert uh -huh. and in mountains. Yes, sir. And in dens and caves of the earth. Hey, baby, the Lord is telling us here, if we got to go through great tribulation, this is where you got to hide. Mm -hmm. In the mountains, in the den, in the crypt. Because you got to be out of sight then. But go ahead and read. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith. Oh, today, these all went to heaven and they relaxed and they great. Obtain a good report <laughs> uh -huh. of faith. Go ahead. Receive not the promise. Oh, they didn't receive? You mean David and God? He didn't receive it. And then you got some guys right now. They, they got it already? Yeah, I don't I think so, people. Something's wrong with that. Yes, sir. They teach them wrong. I hope they teach them wrong because they don't understand. Or is they teach them wrong because they trying to shut up the kingdom of heaven? The Lord said these false prophets shut up the kingdom of heaven. They would not enter in themselves, and those that would enter, they hinder them. Mm -hmm. And see, that's when you bought that's a bad spirit. Now, I, if you don't want to go, that's on you. But then you're gonna try to stop everybody else from going. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. But let's see what the book say now. Verse four. Read that 39 one more time, please. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, uh -huh. received not the promise. What happened? God having provided some better thing for us. Go ahead. That they without us should not be made perfect. Because we all get it at the same time, people. You don't get two or three pieces of uh, orders and leave the rest. You get the whole crop. We all get it at the same time and we be blessed. And ain't nobody got the reward, people. Ain't nobody in heaven. Because this is the first fruit. This is the end game. This is the harvest. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go and see when this thing is going to take place. Let's go to Revelation 19 chapter now. Revelation 19. We got to pick it up, smoke. We're looking good. We're looking pretty. But we got to pick it up. 
I know you like me on camera. We got to get through this thing. Man. Revelation 19. We're going to pick it up in verse 11. 19 and 11. Go ahead and read, bro. And I saw heaven open. Yes. And behold, a white horse. Okay, here come the Lord now. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Go ahead. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Oh, he come back to make war, people. Go ahead and read. Now. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh-huh. And on his head were many crowns. Go ahead. And he had a name written that no man knew. But he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vexed dipped in blood. Uh-huh. And his name is called the Word of God. Hey, that's why John said in John, St. John, the first chapter, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Who is this? What's his name? The Word of God. He's a spokesman. But go ahead and read now. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, uh -huh. clothed in fine linen, White and clean. These are the saints that's been raised from the dead. They're going to meet the Lord in their life. Just Lord and said, and so shall they ever be with the Lord, but they're coming down on the Mount of Olives. But go ahead and read. And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword. Yes. That with it he should smite the nations. Uh huh. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. Go ahead. And he treadeth the wine, press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And when you understand that wine, Prince, that's a lot of killing. That's, right. that's some tears being squashed, and their own blood going to be shed for their own sin. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to repent and come up under that blood of Jesus. But go ahead and read. And he has on his vexture and on his thigh, what is it? A name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, he, is he just a little prophet? No. What is he? Read that one more time. And he has a name, and he has on his vexture and on his thigh, name written. Uh-huh. Kings of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, sir. Now let's go to First Thessalonians, the third chapter. See Jesus coming with his saints again. All the prophets knew about it. But today, we talking about everybody in heaven because you know why? We done got away from the word of God. That's why we think and say these things. We listen to teachers that don't understand. And the book said, when the blind lead the blind, both of them fall into a ditch. Mm -hmm. It's time to come on out the ditch now, people. First Thessalonians 3 and verse 11. When you get it, read. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Uh-huh. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. And see, that's how Lord said this is how you can tell my disciples for the love that they have for one another. But go ahead and read. And toward all men even as we do toward you. Uh-huh. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with uh, all his saints. With all the saints, people, because he done made the end gathering. Where did he get his saints from? From the grave. He raised some going to be living. They're going to be changed. But this is the Lord gathering the wheat into his bar, which represents the kingdom of God. But let's go further because we got to move now. Let's go, to, go right up to the fourth chapter in verse 13. First Thessalonians 4 and 13, what does it say, Smoke? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. See, that's the thing. We got to get away from that ignorance, people. But go ahead. Concerning them which are asleep. Those that are dead. Go ahead. That ye sorrow not. Uh. Even as others which have no hope. Go ahead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, uh -huh. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. God going to bring them with him because he said Christ the first fruit. Afterwards, they that are Christ that is coming. Go ahead and read. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, uh -huh. that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Go ahead and read. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. They go that first fruit, right? They gonna rise first. When at the trump of God, the book say, "Go ahead and read." Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh -huh. to meet the Lord in the air. You ain't going and, to heaven. You gonna meet the Lord in the air. What? And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we got to see where the Lord is gonna be. Cause we gonna meet him in the air. That's right. But let's go. Let's go to Zechariah fourteen quickly. We gonna let the book tell us where we gonna be at. We've met the Lord in the air. If you be so blessed, you're going to meet the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, uh, sometimes the ministry will have you uh, riding in planes, people, and going here and going there, and you be fried over the clouds. So the Lord is in the third heaven. He came a long way. 
and you coming from the ground or out of the ground, you're going to meet the Lord in the air. But let's see where we're going. Zechariah 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Yes, sir. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Uh huh. And the city shall be taken. Go ahead. And the houses rifled. Go ahead. And the women ravished. That's right. What he doing? He gathering the armies. He gathering the strength. Lord is doing some gathering, but he going to deal with the armies. But go ahead and read. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Uh-huh. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. He's talking about Jerusalem. Now go ahead and read. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. Uh-huh. As when he fought in the day of battle. When did he fight in the day of battle? That's when he brought Israel out of Egypt. But go ahead and read. And his feet shall stand in that day uh -huh. upon the Mount of Olives. Go ahead. Which is before Jerusalem on the east. So you mean to tell me when the saints was raised and the living was changed. They met the Lord in the cloud, but where did they come back? Right back down on the Mount of Olives. That's right. The family of God. Ain't that something? This is what you used to hear that song saying all the time. Uh, I, and when the saints come marching in. Yes, sir. We want to be in that number. But go ahead and read. And toward the west. Uh -huh. And there shall be a very great valley. Go ahead. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north. Uh -huh. And half of it toward the south. Where you at now? I'm at the end of verse 4. Okay, continue. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain. Go ahead. For the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azel. Uh huh. Yeah, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Go ahead. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. How many times you going to read that before? But this is the end gathering. The Lord is gathering his saints. Skip down the verse now and what they going to call it. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Ain't that so? In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. That's right. All he called, Yakafi and Hukala, all that. No, no. It's the one name. One God. <laughs> one Lord. But skip down to verse 12 and continue. Go ahead. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Go ahead. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Uh -huh. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Go ahead. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. This is why you want to get your children out of this army, people. Don't fight against the Lord, because you're going to lose. It's going to be a terrible thing. Yes, the really? Lord said not one is coming out of that valley of Joseph. Mm -hmm. That's the valley where Jehovah judges. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that a great torment, torment from the Lord shall be among them. Go ahead. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor. Oh, how are they going to kill each other? They're going to start killing one another. How are you going to fight against the Lord, man? Go ahead and read. And his hand shall raise, rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Uh huh. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. Hey, the Lord gonna let Israel whoop a little head too from all the head what we've been getting. <laughs> but go ahead and read. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Uh huh. Gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Oh, this is when they're sending trumpets, bro, when the Lord returns, huh? Mm hmm. But now, let's. Go a little further. Let's go to Revelation, the fifth chapter, and see how this thing is going. Revelation 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Revelation 5 and 9. And when you get it, go ahead and read. And they sung a new song, saying, uh, Go ahead. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Uh -huh. But thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Because this is the end gathering people. This is the Lord gathering that fruit into his bond. But go ahead and read now. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. Uh -huh. And we shall reign on the earth. Where you going to reign at? On the earth. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30 quickly. Because time is running out and we want to get these scriptures in. And hopefully this will be one day that I made it. Deuteronomy 30 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, uh -huh. the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee. Uh -huh. And thou shalt call to them to man among all the nations, 
whether the Lord thy God has driven thee. And so that's what's happening. We've been scattered from all from money and earth to the other. But now we starting to turn back to the Lord because the Lord is doing the end gathering. Go ahead and read. And shall return unto the Lord thy God. Uh huh. And shall obey his voice. That's what we got to do. Go ahead. According to all that I command thee this day. Uh huh. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Go ahead. That then the Lord thy God would turn thy captive. And what is he going to do? And have compassion upon and, thee. Uh huh. And will return and gather thee from all the nations. Whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. See, the Lord gonna gather the dead. Then he gonna gather Israel from every nation they've been scattered. This is the end gathering. The Lord is gathering this thing. This is what happen at the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. But go ahead and read. If any of thine be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven. What's the Lord gonna do? From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. Yes, sir. And from thence will he fetch thee. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God will bring thee. Into the land which thy fathers possessed. Go ahead. And thou shalt possess it. Uh huh. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. So he noticed his future because he going to multiply us above David and Solomon and them. They said David and Solomon's worth, man, was almost $500 billion. Mm -hmm. Back in that day. But the Lord said, when I take you back, I'm going to multiply you above oh, your father. That's, right. that's how you know. Bring that six first so we can go further. And the Lord, thy God, will circumcise thine heart. That's right. He got to cut all of that foolishness out of our mind, people. Go ahead and read. And the heart of thy seed. Your children. Go ahead and read. To love the Lord thy God. Yes. With all thine heart. Yes. And with all thy soul. Go ahead. That thou mayest live. And that living is eternal life. That's what we want to live. We got to get that foolishness. Our hearts got to be circumcised. Man got to be circumcised in the flesh and in the mind. And sisters got to be circumcised in the mind. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Deuteronomy, Matthew, the 24th chapter. Deuteronomy Matthew? Uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. I know, I know you never heard no book Deuteronomy Matthew. <laughs> but hey, this thing gets you so excited you get crazy because this is the word of God we're dealing sorry, with, people. Sorry. I'm sorry, brother. What chapter? Matthew 12. You quit making jokes. Pay attention. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> you had to stand. You can't let me get over. Matthew 24 chapter. And we're going to pick up at 29. Matthew 24 and 29. When you get it, go ahead and read. 24 and 29. Go ahead, Smoke. Immediately after the tribulation of those days uh -huh. shall the sun be darkened. Yes, sir. And the moon shall not give her light. Uh -huh. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Go ahead. And the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And this is the thing. This is going to kick off the day of the Lord. But when is it coming? Immediately after the tribulation of those days. The Lord ain't coming to stick you off this earth and take you to heaven before great. He ain't coming till after great tribulation. And the sun going to turn black. The moon gonna turn to blood. The stars is gonna fall. The heaven gonna roll back like a scroll, people. This is gonna be. And you talking about the Lord? This is a secret coming. Everybody gonna know Jesus is finna make that return. But go ahead and read. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Go ahead. And he read. shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. That's that seven trumpet, people. Go ahead and read. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, uh -huh. from one end of heaven to the other. Because this is the end gathering. He going to gather Israel from everywhere they've been scattered. He going to raise the dead. He getting all of it. He going to gather all the armies and bring them down and destroy them if they don't repent. But go ahead and read. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. Uh-huh. When its branch is yet tender. Go ahead. And put it forth leaves. Uh-huh. You know that summer is not. And you know that's the truth. You see them things, bud. You say, ooh, summer get ready to come. But the Lord let you know when you see all these things in the earth, know that it is near even at the door. The coming of the Lord. Well, he's going to make his end gathering. And which one am I going to be? We or tear. But now, let's go further. Let's go to Isaiah 11 chapter. Isaiah 11 chapter. Isaiah 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. We're going to read 12 and 13. Isaiah 12 and 13. And when you get it, smoke, go ahead and read. Because time is running out. Go ahead. Isaiah 12. Isaiah 11. 12 and 13. Okay. 
And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. Go ahead. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Ah, right, he's going to assemble. He gathered. He's going to assemble the outcasts. Go ahead and read. And gather together the disperse of Judah. Yes, he from is. the four corners of the earth. Yes, sir. What's the four corners? North, south, east, and west. This is what we scattered at, people. Go ahead and read. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. Uh-huh. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Because we're going to be one. We're going to be fighting against one another then. Go ahead and read. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, uh -huh. and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. What verse are you at? That was the end of 13. Let's go to Isaiah 43. We're moving, people. We are trying to get out of here now, but we're showing you this end gathering. It's all over the book, and we got to be a part of this, people. And if you're the first time you're hearing this, you've been in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Catch an Uber cab on the Sabbath and get down to that Israel of God. Mm -hmm. But now, Isaiah 43 and 5. Go ahead and read it when you get there. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east. It sounds like the end gathering to me. I will bring your seed from the east. Go ahead and read. And gather thee from the west. Uh-huh. I will say to the north, give up. Go ahead. And to the south, keep not back. Go ahead and read. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. This is the end gathering, people. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Even everyone that is called by my name. Yes, sir. For I have created him for my glory. Uh-huh. I have formed him, yeah. I have made him. That's right. And I look here, you strange and you Gentiles. Don't think the Lord don't forgot about you. We got something for you, too. Let's keep watching. Go ahead and read. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes. Who more blind than Israel? We're supposed to be the free, but we blind. Go ahead and read. And the deaf that have ears. Ain't that something we ain't hearing nothing the Lord said? Keep reading. Let all the nations be gathered together. Uh-huh. And let the people be assembled. Yes, sir. Who among them can declare this? Can't now one of them declare. Go ahead. And show us form a thing. Uh-huh. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Go ahead. Or let them hear and say it is true. Go ahead and read. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, uh -huh. and my servant whom I have chosen. Go ahead. That you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed. Go ahead. Neither shall there be after me. Yes, sir. Israel is God's witness, people. Mm -hmm. Not the Jehovah's Witness, it's Israel that's right. Jesus' witness. But look here, we just read the book, people. If you get mad, it's on you. That's Let's right. go to Isaiah 26 now. We see he's going to gather the, 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 the people. He's going to get the dead. But let's see how it's going to be. Let's go to Isaiah 26 now. And we got to get out of here, man. We is running behind. I thought we had made it. Isaiah 26, and we're going to pick it up at 17. What did it say? Like as a woman with child that draw near the time of her delivery uh -huh. is in pain and crieth out in her pains, yes, sir. so shall we be, we be in, in thy sight, O Lord. That's right, because this pain that we in, this trial and tribulation plus this great tribulation, is just like a woman finna have a baby in her last thing. She heard that pain. This is the way Israel is. But go ahead and read. We have been with child. Uh-huh. We have been in pain. Go ahead. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. That's right. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Because we ain't been on our job as the priest. But go ahead. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Because when they gonna fall when Jesus make that seventh trumpet. Go ahead. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. Go ahead. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. No, awake and sing, you up in heaven, you're going to real good. No, no. <laughs> dwell in dust. You're dwelling with the dust because it's where you get the fruit from. Remember, we're dealing with that fruit, the first fruit. Go ahead and read. For thy dew is as the dew of earth, uh -huh. and the earth shall cast out the dead. What? Go ahead. Come, my people. Enter thou into thy chamber. Yes, sir. And shut thy doors about thee. Uh-huh. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. See, this is the blessing now. This is when you let your body down in the grave. He said, hide thyself. Shut thy doors about thee. This is when you go into the grave. Mm -hmm. But look what he said. Go ahead and read. Until the indignation be overpassed. And he said, as in for a little moment, that's the secret of death, the first death of sleep. Hey, when you die, you ain't got no constant time. It don't be like you done nod it off. And then, before you know it, the Lord's going to wake you up. You say, man, I must have, I must have done, it, done it. But it's going to be just like a moment. Because you ain't got no conscience of time. Go ahead, man. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth uh -huh. for their iniquity. 
the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Okay, we got to be quick now because we got to get the strange and the Gentile in here. Let's go to St. John because the Lord's still doing that gathering now. St. John 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. St. John 10 and 11. Okay, when you get it, go ahead and read. I am the good shepherd. Yes, he is. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. This is Jesus now. Go ahead. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not. Go ahead. See the wolf coming uh -huh. and leave it the sheep and flee it. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. That's right. They don't care. The these preachers don't care nothing about the show, don't they? run off and leave in a minute. Go ahead and read. The hireling fleeth because he isn't hireling. Yes, sir. And careth not for the sheep. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. Yes, he is. And know my sheep. He know your sheep. And have known the man. And they know him. Go ahead and read. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. Uh -huh. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Yes, he did. And other sheep I have. Which are not of this fold. Wait a minute, he got some more sheep he got to get. Now, these are the strangers, the Gentiles. This is the end gathering. Go ahead and read. Them also I must bring. Uh huh. And they shall hear my voice. What? And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. This is what the mystery has been from the beginning, people. One fold, one shepherd. One faith, one baptism, That's one it. God. That's this is right. what we supposed to be dealing with. We ain't supposed to be divided. That's right. But now, brother. let's see what the mystery was. Let's go to Ephesians, the third chapter. We're almost out of here. We're almost out of here. Ephesians, the third chapter. But this is the end gathering, people. This is what we got to deal with. Ephesians 3. Let's see what the mystery is. People always talk about the mystery of the church. Let's see if you just read the book, the mystery will be cleared up just like that. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. What does it say? Go ahead. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. That's right. See, Paul, I'm going to let you understand this mystery in Christ. Go ahead and read. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. It looks like it ain't known now, is it? Go ahead and read. Right. As it is now revealed to his holy apostles uh -huh. and prophets by the Spirit. That's how you got to understand what the mystery is by his holy apostles and, and the prophets. The prophets. This thing is built up on the law and the testimony. But go ahead and read. That the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs. What the Gentiles going to be? What? Fellow heirs. So you ain't got to come up with no new God. And God, they think they was left out. The Lord had you included all the time. Yes, but you got to come the way the Lord wants you to come. Go ahead and read. And of the same body yes. and partakers of his promise in Christ uh -huh. by the gospel. Go ahead. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Go ahead and read. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints uh -huh. is this grace given. Go ahead. That I shall preach among Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And this is what Israel's supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be one. We're supposed to be putting down the Gentiles. I can't wait till you wash my feet. <laughs> Nobody want to wash your feet. You don't even wash your own feet. But the thing <laughs> is, the Gentiles got to be fellow ears with us. Go ahead and read. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. How long has it been around? Forever. Which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And you mean to tell me there's something that's been from the beginning of the world? You think you're going to change it? Mm -mm. You think you're going to alter it? Mm -mm. You better get with it or it's going to crush it. That's but right. now, let's go further now. Let's go to Isaiah 49, and we got one more script after this. No Isaiah 49. I just want to show the stranger that the Lord ain't forgot about the Gentiles. Mm. But all you got to do is keep God's commandments, his speech days, statutes, and his judgment. He said, if you, if with every nation who has fear of God, he's going to be receptive of the Lord. Isaiah 49, and we're going to pick him up at verse 6. We're going to read 6 and 7, Smoke. Go ahead. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob okay. and to restore the preserved of Israel. See, this is a, a thing that you got to tell these Israelites that this kicking against Jesus ain't restricted for Israel. The Lord says it's a light thing for you to get Israel, man. I got a bigger job for you to do. This is the end gathering. Go ahead and read. I will also give thee for light to the Gentiles. Yes. That thou mayest be my salvation until the end of the earth. And that's what it's all about. That's, that's the right. mystery. Got to be together and one God. But let's go to the sure. last place. Now, Isaiah 56. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. You didn't want that 7? 
Read it if you want to, brother. Jesus. No, that's all right. Read it if you, if you want to read it, read it, man. <laughs> read, read it if you want to read it, brother. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his only one, Go to ahead. him whom man despises, to uh -huh. him whom the nation abhorred, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Yes. Princes also shall, shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Man, that was a beautiful place. I'm glad you read it. But now, let's go to Isaiah 56, and this is going to be the last scripture. Isaiah 56, but we just want to show this in gathering. So what is it the Lord has gathered the nations? He going to raise the dead and get the saints. He going to get the Gentiles and the stranger, and he going to get them tares and bind them in bundles. And he's going to cast them into the lake of fire. But the wheat coming to my barn. And he said, let them both go together. I'll separate them when I come. But Isaiah 56 and verse 1, what did it say? Thus saith the Lord, keep your judgment and do justice. Yes. For my salvation is near to come. Yes, it is. And my righteousness to be revealed. Lord said, you are one that salvation near to come. And his righteousness going to be revealed. Go ahead and read. Blessed is the man that doeth this. Oh, blessed is the Israelite that do this. The man that doeth this. Go ahead. And the son of man that lays hold on it. Uh-huh. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. You mean the Sabbath got something to do with salvation? Yes, it does. Go ahead and read. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Go ahead. Neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, uh -huh. The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Go ahead. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Uh -huh. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath, uh -huh. and choose the things that please me. Go ahead. And take hold of my covenant. Uh -huh. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. Uh -huh. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Keep reading. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord uh -huh. to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. Go ahead. To be his servants. Uh -huh. Everyone that keeps the Sabbath. He keeps from, throwing that Sabbath in there. Yeah, from, that's right. Everyone that keeps it Sunday. Sabbath. Go ahead and read. From polluting it uh -huh. and taking hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh -huh. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Uh -huh. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. All people. That's what the Lord's house is for all people. Continue read that eighth verse. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel said, Yet will I gather others to him besides those that I gathered unto him. Because this is the end gathering people. So remember, make sure that you are part of that wheat and not the tares. And I thank you for your time. I hope somebody learned something. And at this time, we're going to turn it back over to the host. Praise the Lord. Excellent reading. Excellent teaching. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right. I'd like to thank brothers working in the vineyard for another great lesson. And if you have enjoyed what you have heard, then please like, post, and share. We really want for you to like, post, and share. And some of you all have inquired about the different programs that are available through the Israel of God's website. We encourage you to go directly to the website. The address is www.theisraelofgod.com. Again, that's www.theisraelofgod.com. And sisters and brothers, throughout each and every one of these lessons that the brothers working in the vineyard have put together, as well as at the Israel of God, the one thing that you must do in order to receive salvation, that is, you must keep God's Ten Commandments. There's absolutely no other way, sisters and brothers. And also, on behalf of brothers working in the vineyard, I'd like to thank you yet again for tuning in with us on a Thursday at 1 p.m. via Facebook. And as always, brothers working in the vineyard, I look forward to seeing you at this very same time next week. And until such time, sisters and brothers, Peace to you all in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.